happening on this beautiful Tuesday morning we're having so far. Well, welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining our Lincoln Electric Cutting Systems. We, today, we are going to be going over how we set up the plate mark on the, in the VMD software, along with gen generating a multi-tool um, that can be used to do multiple cut paths and, and or uh, multiple in the CAD software, and then we'll be bringing those into the VMD and going through the process of that we want to generate the offset um, to under. So when we do bring in the file from the CAD, that the player and the tool that you have located to the plasma can say oh, that four inches is four inches. So we know that the plate marker is offset from the plasma, and the plasma in this case is always going to be tool number one, which means that it is going to be the master tool. So the way we set the thing up is, is that we are to go to tool library in the and in D, we can see our junkies here, and tool two is going to be what is assigned for our marker. So how I'm going to start this is I'm going to go ahead and draw the torch over to we have placed on our table. And one second while I jog that the metal. Over to the metal where we want it. We're going to set our program zero. What this will do is that this will just more or less keep a area to where the torch can come back to. If we set our program zero, we can now draw our marker over to where that pierce or where we're going to generate that pierce point. So right I am going to toggle the plasma on. Plasma torch will come down and touch the material and just turn on. Now what we want it to do is we want to just generate a pierce hole large enough that we can set up the, the, the plate marker. So I'm going to toggle my on and it's going down and it's going to touch off the material and then there's a hole into the plate. Once it gets done piercing that hole in the plate, then just toggle it back off and then the head will retract and come back into position. Momento. Moving down. Now, since it's done with the pierce point, I'm going to go ahead and toggle it off. It is going to retract back into position. Point in the plate. Here we have our pierce point. Now we go ahead and jog the plate over to where that pierce hole is at. Now we want to make sure that we are as pretty accurate as possible because we want to sure that the plate marker goes exactly where we tell it. So a way we can do that is we can use the continuous to make large movements and then once we start getting really close, we can go to incremental and going in steps. Now, we need to make sure that the plate marker can reach the material, but we push it down. We want to make sure that that hole in the tip of the plate marker itself is inside of that pierce hole that we just generated. So, one second while I jog the... Over, so we get where we need it. We put an 
manually push down the plate marker into that hole. So as I'm pushing this into the hole, I'm just verifying that that is going in there and is reached around by just doing this incremental if it doesn't fit. We need it. We need the, the tip of the plate marker to be a push right through it. This will give us the proper measurement. Now, once we get that, we're in there just right here to where it takes tool number two, which is going to be our plate marker. I can go ahead and press set. Now, this will become the offset based off of our plasma torch. So this will get it to where when we generate files in CAD, we want the plate marker to go first, but it's the perfect and the perfect dimensions away from the plasma because that's the so, so cool. so so yeah. I'm going to go ahead and press OK on this and close this out. And because we want to generate a small little test file to verify that the offset that we just generated for our, our VMD is going to be uh, exactly where we want it. We can feather it to make it as perfect as we want. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on Go to Program Zero, and then it will head back to where our Pierce point is at. And I'm going to our CAD software. In our CAD software, I am going to do a two-inch, put a one-inch square on the inside of it that is going to be plate marked. I'm going to go over to my tool and I'm out and a two inch by two inch square and then I'm going to draw out a one inch one inch by one inch square orange pointer tool. I'm going to do it for select all and then I'll press C then E. The square inside of the large two inch square. So E or to be set even inside of those. I'm going to select the inside square and I'm going to generate a tool path for it, which I'm going to generate an online tool path. So that's my inside square to machine path. And we go to basic cut. Stated is the plasma. Now we need to generate a tool for the plate marker for it to direct the tool path. How we do that is we're going to press the browse button over to the right of that tool and into our tool library. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type out plate marker. I'm going to leave it as plasma. This D1 is the diameter of the tool that we are doing it for curve compensating reasons. We can generate as many tools in here as possible and can change the diameter of the tools to allow proper spacing. That one who is artsy fartsy as myself is I will generate a few of these plate marker tools, one of a different that allow for different types of spaces. But for this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and change this to 0 0.05 for our diameter. The next feature of is that we change the turret. This is the tool itself that it is determined inside of here that the EMC will understand. Uh, in the EMC, we make all of the adjustments to number two. So we verify that our turret is number two. Authority, we want to change to one because we want the plate marker to go first. And once we select those items, we can go ahead and click add and add that tool into the library. We can go ahead and click close. And then up here to the top where it says tool, we can now select our plate marker. 
Now, our play anchor is an oscillating tool that moves up and down. So our max speed rate, because I want this to be a solid line, is to be 30. So I'm going to enter in 30 for speed rate for my marker. Now, it's slower, or you can go faster, but it goes faster than 45. It's going to catch up with the oscillation of the weight marker, and it's more of a simple pattern versus creating a long MAR line. But generating an online toolpath, we're not going to be using lead-ins and lead-outs. So I'm going to go click OK. You select my outside perimeter, and I'm going to generate a male toolpath, and this will be a plasma path. Here to the machine. Great toolpath. Toolpath. We're going to skip path templates. We're going to go to basic cut. It's on plasma. We're going to set to climbing, and this is going to be set to 100. Now, I don't really need to worry about out and leave out on this because it's really not that important right now. And click OK. Now we have a male toolpath on the outside. We have an online toolpath on the inside, and we need to assure that our online tool is going to go first and then switch over to the plasma for the outside. So go ahead and just sequence and this. List is that it tells us what the drug as by the red line and it tells our tool path is that. So instead of confusing what is tool path and what is um, the drawing, I'm going to do tool path only. So I'm going to have tool path here, here and just display the tool paths that are generated. Make sure that this tool path here is going to be sent to front because I want it to be first. So I'm going to send it to front. So we have path going first and our path going last. And then I can do a pull away for select all. And put it at my Y. So I can go ahead and generate my G code. So make sure that my item is selected. Go to machine and out. Design is in here. Calculator and it's going to now and we all want to not learn how what what G code is generated. I'm going to tell you a little bit about G code. As we can see with this M06 right here is 06 T2. That means that it's using rule number two. And we can verify that this is our feature thirty. So that our tool number two is going to go first. This is that this M06 is over to our plasma, and that our speed rate is 100. We know that our sequence is correct because our G2 is first and our T1 is last. Let's go ahead and save the file. Name this multi tool. And Back to my BMV, and I press. It will move the main back to where my first point was. Select job. And I'm. We this generated correctly. The reason that the file was generated correctly is because, as we can see under tool library, tool 2 has a color of fluorescent green. And one, which is the plasma, is red. So we can see in this file right off the bat that this is a plate mark for the center portion and then a red portion. We have this material preset up. 
this file, and you can see how the tool number one generates and then tool number one generates. So I'm going to come over to the offset and then to start the plate marker. And as we can see, the plate marker is generating. And then it's going to move over with the head and go to where the plasma is at. And now the plasma portion. And back to Pro. So everything that we just did was based off of the plasma in the first. That plate marker is where the program zero is set to, but it moves the plate marker over to that program zero and then starts the program. Now, we can take this piece, cut out, and verify those measurements in even all the way around so it's a two inch square with a one inch square on the inside. With that D1, the diameter of the of the plate marker, we should now see a piece of material that's perfectly centered inside of this two inch and you can use a ruler or, or a mic to press that. If you need to adjust your tool library or need to the offset, then you can go ahead and just move the machine and then reset our offset to make sure that those are the uh, the offset is perfect. So keep repeating this process on that offset is, is uh, on. So I'm going to assume that everything is awesome. I'm going to go ahead and we are going to generate a project that has different types of patterns into the, the product itself. Now when you're using the plate marker, we have some different areas that we can generate inside of our pad different types of patterns for the plate marker. So since we still have our rectangle in here, I'm going to go to File, then New, and we're going to out. And we have a piece of clip art that was online that I'm going to bring in, which is the Phoenix. Go to File, and I'm import. Yeah. So I'm going to select my phoenix.dxf art, and I'm going to press Import brings up normal import arrow, so I'm just going to go ahead and just left click. I'm not going to drag it out. And I'm going to leave my quote duplicates unchecked and this file. Okay. We can see we have to make sure that it is all broken up into individual pieces. What we're going to do is, is we're going to assign a different type of pattern for each of these elements. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to zoom in to these bottom feather areas and to select the first one. I'm going to hold down the shift key, select three and five. And then I'm going to go to arrange. And what do is make it so now I only have to select one or three or five, and it will select all, all three of those items. To do the same thing, I'm going to select number two, number four, and then six, and I'm going to arrange and tap on both of those. So one, select one, three, and five. And if I select number two, it will select one, four, six. Then select one, five. Go to machine, create a tool path, and I'm going to fill. We'll see you later. <laughs> now, we skip past templates, and I'm going to create to fill type. We have different types of, of fills that we generate for the items. So that's the display of that fill type in the upper left-hand corner. You can see.
see there's quite a different type of, of fill patterns that we can generate. So what we're going to generate for these feathers down here is I'm going to select line sweep at an angle of 30 degrees at 0%. So my angle is going to be 35 and my line sweep is going to be selected. I'm going to go to my fill tool tab. Now I'm going to come up here to the top where it says tool and I'm going to select plate marker and I'm going to in a feed rate of 30. I'm going to go press OK. The cut of that fill pipe generated at 35 degrees is including the correction that we have entered in. So the 0.45 diameter is what's spacing these items out. Now I can select 2, 4, 6 and process. Select these three, those items, go to machine, we're going to create a fill pattern. I'm going to type, we're going to go to 135. So we're going to select line sweep, then angle of 135, and we're going to leave overlap at zero. Go to fill tool. Two plate marker, and we're going to make a third. Okay. We have a fill pattern. They're opposing the way that we work. We're here to my chest plate. On there, we're going to generate a spiral fill. So I'm going to select my chest plate. To machine, fill path, fill pattern again. Here to the fill type, select spiral to leave both the overlap and the angle the same. So come over here to the fill tool, head and come over to plate marker, give 30. And I'm okay. This is the line pattern that it is going to generate. Now, if we were to change that 0 0.045 for our D1, then we would just be a little bit more spaced out. And being an artsy fartsy person, then I would want to have a couple solutions because each of those results comes out a little bit different when it comes to using your play marker. So idea is to generate a few different patterns at a few different sets to kind of determine of what you really want to do. Obviously, more lines are going to take a little bit more time than amount of lines. Get really spicy with this piece right here, so I'm going to select this piece here and come over to Machine. I'm going to create tool app, and I'm going to select Online for this app. As we know, online toolpath just follows the line. We're going to create a basic cut. We're going to the tool, change it to play marker, and we're going to create 30. Okay. All of our plate marker in place. Now we're going to about the plasma. So I'm going to go ahead and select the side perimeter of the Phoenix. Go to machine, we're going to pass, and we're going to get a normal mail tool path. We're going to set template. We are for plasma up at top. We're going to set to climbing and create a 100. Now, a regular pattern, we can leave the line pattern or the line lead in on this, on this design. But if you have to change it, feel free. You're more than welcome to. And I'm okay. So as we see, we have several different types of patterns and several different types of tools in design. Make sure that the thing is going to be sequenced properly because we definitely want to make sure that the plate is first versus the plasma. So I'm sure that I have everything selected. 
fit, go to layout, see, and we're going to start sequence by list. What we can see in this list is, is that it's got the black plus the clear line design. So I don't want to be confused, so I'm going to cruise over to tool pass only, select tool pass only, and as our outside perimeter going first, with our design going out. Well, I want to find my tool path that we generated goes to back, and then that our plate marker is all going to go first. So that sequence, the way we're going to do OK, and now OLA for select all, put this at my zero, zero port. That that is at your zero zero coordinate. I can machine and then pressing the calculator. Now let's take our code and we can verify that process is as we can see M zero six T two. So we know that the plate marker is going first with a feed rate. Entire G code to bear and see that, that I can show you right off the bat that this is what our class hooks going off right now. now. So we have 06 T1, that means that it switched over to plasma and then starts the plasma process to finish the rest of the design. So that the whole entire design is complete, then we can go and save it. So I'm going to go to scissors. I'm going to save this Phoenix multi tool. Click save. Because I made it already. We can bring this into our VM. I'm going to select my Now to select. Here. Now in display right here, we can see that there are different colors. Display was good because that means that the file was created correctly. Open. All of the marker has turned out green as it should, and is on the outside is going to be red. The tree is showing colored for plasma. Number two, which is plate marker. So we have that. Now we can go ahead and jog our to get the rectangle or the square that we cut out. So let's move this over. All right. so program zero. And, and run our. So, and now the play marker is going to be running. Process. Make sure your earplugs because it is out. If you have a water table, then I definitely would recommend making sure that your water is all up to the material and get some key pieces of material to hold down your plate because it will vibrate the plate around. And we want to make this thing looks good. Now, the intensity of the plate marker, you'll get different results. Different speeds will also get you different results for this project. <laughs> hey, Chris. Crazy, you crazy box. Anybody uh, have any questions? <laughs> so I 
I'm going to have a manual write-up on this webinar that's going to be posted uh, on the site, along with the top of this webinar will be on our webinars page. Um, probably by the end of the week. Now it's moving over to the plasma, so it's going to go through the IHS sequence, determine where the plasma is at. Maybe. done with this design, we went from generating a rectangle to make sure that the offset was complete. And then we went through the process of generating a multi-tool file for this project. Now find that what we have done can be used with either plasma, or it could be used for plate marker, or if you wanted to set up different types of feed rates for different portions of your design. Now done as plasma is the design itself, but over if you have a plate marker, then I definitely recommend going through your plate marker and setting up different types of tools with different types of diameters and get different types of spacing, different types of looks of the design, and then you can play around with it yourself. But all that is the process of how you set up your plate marker for the VMD, go through the process of verifying the option you have generated, generate that offset and move through the process of taking a, a uh, adding plate marker to it with the different types of patterns into design to help flex the possibilities of your table. Okay, so we're Thanks for joining us today. That will conclude our tutorial on how you generate multi-tool files throughout the CAD and getting them set up through VMD. If you need anything, feel free to get a hold of us. We have a chat feature on our website. Um, if you just have a quick question, just join into chat. We will obviously have our normal so at torchmate.com. We'll get a hold of us through email. And obviously, you can call us too. We're always available. So. If you have questions, feel free to get a hold of us. If not, everybody have a good day. And once again, thanks for joining us.
Thank you. Thank you.